Shammai, Yasharallah, Yahweh, Allah Hayanawa, Yahweh, Aha, Shammai, Yasharallah, Yahweh, Allah Hayanawa, Yahweh. Aha Shamai Yasharala Yahawa Allah Hayanawa Yahawa Aha Hear O Israel, Yahawa our power, Yahweh is one. Brakata Yahawa, Brakata Yahweh Shai, Brakata Yahawa, Brakata Yahweh Shai, Brakata Yahawa, Brakata Yahweh Shai, Brakata Yahawa, Brakata Yahweh Shai. Bless you, Yahawa. Bless you, Yahweh Shai. Bahasham Rakakwadash, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Double honor to all the apostles and all the bishops, great millstone. Peace and blessing to the house of David, the elect, beginning with the 144,000. As well as the one third and the innumerable multitude Israelites scattered among the nations, Israelite foreigners, the various men, women, and little ones, little boys, and little girls whom Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, is going to have mercy on this time, whoever you may be. Shalom, Yasharallah, peace, Israel. This is your brother Kazak from GMS, Mississippi, former member of GMS Chicago. But I'm still with those brothers in the spirit. Back at you once again through the spirit, power, and mercy of Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai Bahasham Rakakwadash. And this is going to be an introduction, you know, to a series that I'm going to start doing. And this is in response to a video done by the beloved elder brother Barak Allah, you know, from the GMS Ancient Days Camp. You know, the elder Barack Allah, you know, from GMS Los Angeles. He did a video going into the topic of Israelites scattered to the Orient. And Orient, in this sense, meaning the Far East. Okay? Israelites scattered to Asia, or what's called the Orient. Now, when you read in the New Testament, when you deal with the letters written by the beloved Apostle Paul, he wrote to the Israelites that were living in the regions of Asia Minor. Now, Asia Minor, in the New Testament, Asia is speaking about modern-day Turkey and the different surrounding regions, okay? But dealing with the lesson done by the you know beloved elder brother, Barak Allah, he was speaking about Israelites being scattered to far Asia, okay, to the far east, okay, China, Japan, etc. You know, got Israelites in India, Israelites in the Philippines, you know, Israelites everywhere. You know, we're all over the world. Like I said, it's gonna be an introduction, you know, to um, you know, you know, the elder brother. This is in response to the lesson he did. So this is a response, but as well as an introduction. You know, as well as a, uh, a starter video for the series I'm going to do on this topic, Israelites scattered to the Orient, okay? Israelites scattered to the to the East, in this case, the Far East. Okay, so we're going to get some scriptures. I pray you're edified, okay? Because wherever we're located at, wherever we're scattered, we're going home. Yahweh Shai, the only begotten son of Yahweh, is returning to this planet Earth to, to deliver his people. Wherever we've been scattered, he's coming to take us home. He's coming to rescue us from all these places of our captivity. Okay, and the us meaning the elect of our people. Okay, because the Lord is only coming to deliver his elect, his chosen of Israel. Okay, so let's go. We're going to start off in the book of the prophet Isaiah chapter 43 verse 5. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed meaning our offspring you know in this case the offspring of our forefathers which will be us today we are that seed those of us that are living today so he's specifically talking to us fear not for i am with thee i'm with you he's with israel 
I will bring your seed, your offspring, from the east. So Israelites are in the east. We're in the far east even. And gather thee from the west. Some of us are in the west today. We're in the western hemisphere. What's called the Americas. I will say to the north, give up. And to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far. And my daughters from the ends of the earth. From all the places where we've been scattered. Even everyone that is called by my name. Because he put his name on us. Claiming us as his people. And also he gave us the name Israel. He's a prince of the power. Which basically translates to he's a son of God. You know we're the sons of God. Okay. So a son is called after his father's name. You know. Even everyone that's called by, by my name. For I have created him for my glory. I have formed him. Yeah I have made him. Yeah, so the Heavenly Father takes confidence in how he created his people, the Israelites. You know, but the point of this, you know, the Lord tells us he's going to bring us from the east. I will bring thy seed. We're that seed. Those of us living today, he will bring us from the east. Okay. The book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 49 and verse 12. Behold, these shall come from far. The seed of Israel And lo these from the north And from the west And and these And these from the land of Sinem Alright Sinem or you could say Sinai Now what is the land of Sinem or Sinai What's that land Or what's that region What's that region of the earth? Now for Sinem. The Hebrew word is. Sion Yum. Sion Yum. Which translates to, uh, to thorns. Now it says a people living at the extremity of the known world. May be identified with the inhabitants of southern China. So basically, meaning our people that have been scattered to the far parts of the earth, to the furthest parts of the earth, uttermost parts of the earth, you know? Now, we're in the uttermost part of the earth, those of us in the Western Hemisphere, but when you think about the Far Eastern Hemisphere, you know, when you think about the Far East, the Eastern Hemisphere, that's the uttermost parts of the earth to us. So that's the extremity of of the known world okay it can be identified with southern China okay Sayanyam again you know Strong's definition now it says plural of an otherwise unknown name Sainim a distant oriental region Sainim once again think about China, you think about Japan, you think about the Philippines, you know, the Far East. Okay? So the point of all this, it says we're going to come from these locations because you have to keep in mind we've been scattered there. We're going to come from far because let's go to Deuteronomy. We're going to come from far because this will happen to us. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 64. And Yahweh shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods which neither thou nor thy fathers have known even wood and stone. So there you have it. We've been scattered among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other. Okay, as far as to, you know, Far East Asia, you know, the Orient, you know, you have the word Oriental or Orient, it means East. So we've been scattered to the Far East. 
Now I have an article for you. Now I have a book I'm gonna bring out as well. And I wanted to, you know, call myself Russian to do a video, but it wasn't gonna come out right. You know? It wasn't gonna come out right. You know, um basically the book deals with Israelite presence in Asia. The title is something else, but we know we ain't no damn Africans. We're not Africans, okay? That you know, that one book by uh Ivan, or you could say Ivan Van Sartima. You know, we're going to say Israelite presence in Asia. We ain't no damn Africans, man. You know, so I'm going to eventually bring that book out. I was looking through it last night. I'm like, man, I can't rush through this, you know, because it's too much information. Because I want to touch on not only how you have Israelites in China, Japan, but we're in India. You know, we're in Indonesia. You know, we're in Papua New Guinea. You know, we're everywhere. Now you have, you know, you have a... Uh, Moab, Ammon, Japheth, you know, um, you had these different heathens. They're in these lands too, but our people are among them. Okay. Now we have an article here, you know, for process of time, I'm not going to read it all. I'm just going to get the important parts, you know, for this lesson. Okay. We're on blackpass.org and we're not black. We're Israelites. All right. Now, the, uh, the title of this article reads, it says Africans, but we know we're Israelites. It says in African Americans, but we know we're Israelites. In China, a long history, a troubled present, and a promising future? Question mark. This is put up March 9th, 2015. Okay. And this topic is so deep. You can't go off of what's face value as far as what you think an Israelite is supposed to look like because a lot of our people, we even look like the heathen now. We even look like Moab, some of us, because we've been scattered among them. You know, scattered among Moab, scattered among Ammon. You know, and I was thinking about that too. You know, um, because these are totally different nations, Moab and Ammon. But I was meditating on Bruce Lee. We we speculate that Bruce Bruce Lee, we speculate Bruce Lee, you know the the martial artist, you know he was he was also a uh, you know pretty good actor, you know you could say a list actor when he was alive, you know but very well known martial artist, you know from uh, Hong Kong I want to say, we speculate that he's an Israelite, but I was meditating on it, you know, um, you have the people of Moab and Ammon. They actually come from a man by the name of Lot. When you read the Bible, Lot was a son of God. You know, Lot, that was Abraham's nephew. Before we would call Israelites, we would call the sons of God. You know? So Abraham was a son of God. Lot was also a son of God, okay? Now, um, I was meditating on Bruce Lee. Now, um, the name Lee... Uh, uh, Lee goes back to Lot I was looking it up a while back And I may do a video on that eventually You know But um, the name Lot Going back to our forefather Lot Abraham's nephew Lot in the Hebrew is Lawat And um, it means protection or, or, or to be covered Because when you read his account He wasn't destroyed in Sodom and Gomorrah And those other cities He wasn't destroyed in Sodom The Lord rescued Lot and his two daughters You know so you know, lot means protected or, or covered, you know? But when you look up the, the name Lee, it means the same thing, you know? So I was meditating on it, like, you know, that's spiritual, you know? Because the people of, you know, Moab and Ammon, they go back to that man Lot. But we also speculate that, you know, Bruce Lee himself, he's a Jake, you know? We speculate that he's an Israelite based off his spirit, you know? Which the, the name Bruce... I looked that up a while back. I want to say it means man of the thicket. Basically, it's a warrior type name, you know. It's a warrior name. Man of, of the of the thicket, you know. You think about a fighter, you know. He was a fighter. You know what I'm saying? But anywho, let's get to this article, man. Basically, Israelites. 
Israelites in China, you know, we're not Africans or we're not African Americans, you know, a long history, a troubled present and a promising future. Question mark. In the article below, independent historian Robin Lofton explores the past, present and possible future relationship between the world, the world's most populous nation and people. Now it says African, but we're going to say Israelite ancestry because the Israelites are great. Hamites are not great. The Israelites made Egypt great. Everybody talking about the greatness of uh, Egypt. You can't attribute that to the, the people of Ham. That greatness is attributed to the Israelites that dwell in the land of Egypt. We dwell in the land of Ham. We made that great. We made Egypt a powerhouse on the earth, not the people of Ham. Okay? Just like we made America, the modern day Egypt, and also Babylon the Great, we made this place a damn powerhouse on the earth. You know? That's right, man. So it says um, Africa, you know, the land of Ham, which our people, you know, we, we did live in that land. And a lot, a lot of our people still live in that land today. So we got to balance that out too. We're not Hamites, but a lot of our people do live in the land of Ham, which is called Africa today. And China, the land of Moab, you know, so the land of Ham and the land of Moab have had contact for more than a thousand years. Some scholars assert that the contacts began as early as 4th century AD. But convincing evidence is sporadic or lacking, beginning with the Tang Dynasty, 618 AD to 907 AD. Documented evidence of contact and trade exists showing a relationship between China and the city-states of East Africa. And I'm going to say this, you even have Israelites in the eastern part of Africa. Now, we mostly speak about we mostly speak about Israelites in West Africa, but we dwelled all over the land of Ham. You know, even in Ethiopia. You know, in Eritrea, you know. So we're all in the eastern part of Africa. You know, we're even in the uh, southern Africa. You know, Jake and Dam, Madagascar, you know, Jake is everywhere, man. You know, Uganda, you know what I'm saying? Now, don't get it twisted. You have Hamites there. Hamites are the native inhabitants of the land of Ham. But a lot of our people are everywhere throughout that land. And when you speak about East Africa, you got to keep in mind the, uh, the Arab slave trade. When they were taking Israelites from the uh, the eastern part of Africa and, and, and selling them, you know, throughout the Middle East and also to uh, Far East Asia. Okay. So it says, once again, beginning with the Tang Dynasty in 618 AD to 907 AD, documented evidence of contact and trade exists showing a relationship between China and the city-states of East Africa. This relationship has evolved over the centuries and led to a migration. Now, say it's Africans, we're going to say Israelites. Led to a migration of Israelites to China to study, trade, and act as diplomats. At least one account indicates that Du Huan, if I'm saying it correctly, if I'm not, excuse me, was the first Chinese Moabite <laughs> to visit Africa, the land of Ham, probably in Nubia during the 8th century AD. Now I'm going to say this once again, we're not Nubians, we're not Egyptians, you know, we're the Israelites, but we lived in that land, the land of Ham. Since the 7th century, Israelites, it says Africans, we're going to say Israelites, have maintained a consistent commercial relationship with China. During the Tang Dynasty, Check this out. Arab traders, which are the Ishmaelites in the Bible, brought Israelite slaves from East Africa to China because you had what was called the Arab slave trade. When our people were, were traded, you know, throughout the Middle East and also to China, you know, some even, you know, to Japan, you know. Now, I still got to find the info on that, but I can believe it, you know, because... You have a lot of uh, people in Japan 
you know, a lot of so-called Ammonites that vibe with the American culture so much, they can't possibly be Ammon. You know, and I'll do, you know, a lesson on that, Lord willing. You know, you got people in Japan, they vibe into drill music. Where they get that from? They foot working like they from Chicago. You know, they they want to live like um, they're, they're Chicano. You know, pretending to be Issachar. You know, Issachar in the uh, in the 80s and 90s in Los Angeles. They vibing with the spirit of Jake because a lot of those people in Japan... The land of Ammon, they have to be Israelites. Okay? Hip hop culture is very big in Japan. You know? What what, what they call it? Uh you know the the uh the B-boy dance, you know, and break dance and all that. That's heavy in Japan. Once again, footworking, like they're from Chicago, the way they rapping in Japan. Once again, they got drill rap there now. Alright? So I speculate that we were not only traded to china but also to japan as well it just makes sense so we're going to read this again since the seventh century israelites have maintained a consistent re commercial relationship with china the land of moab during the tang dynasty arab ishmaelite traders brought israelite slaves let me say that clearly ishmaelite traders brought israelite slaves from east africa to china they comprise one of the many commodities in the Arabs is in the Arabs is large scale maritime trade with China. During this era, the first Chinese cultural perception of Israelite people developed. We're not gonna say African, because the nations know who we are too. These dark skinned people were known as Kunlun or, or Kunlun. Salaki for my mispronunciation. They were described as lower class, ignorant, scary, and dangerous. Yeah, because you in a whole nother land. Just like our four parents were brought here to the shores of the Americas, we were brought to a whole nother region. You know? Not speaking the language, not knowing these different people, you know, that, that took us captive. All right? There's a lot of history dealing with the slave trade. You know, now a lot of time we get Joel the uh, the third chapter, and we'll speak about how you had the you know the uh, the people of Ham, so you know so called Africans, and also the people of uh, Ishmael, so called Arabs. They came together, and they sold us in slavery, and that's true. Th they did that, you know, because that's prophecy in Joel the third chapter. But also, even our own people, our wicked people, they played a part in the slave trade too. There, there, was, there were just as many, if not more, Israelites <laughs> selling our people, you know, to the heathen, you know, than the heathens themselves. Now, the heathen, they're, they're not going to get away with what they did to us, you know, and they've done more damage to our people than our own people did. But our, our people, the wicked of our people did play a big part in the transatlantic slave trade and even in the eastern slave trade, you know, which um, Ishmael was responsible for that. But our people still aided them. The sellouts of our people. You always had sellouts of our people. Okay? But let's read this again. Okay? So, um, it says, During this era, the first Chinese cultural perception of Israelite people developed. You know? So, Moab, they had their frame of reference for Israel. You know, pretty much. The way, the way they thought about us. These dark-skinned people were known as Kunlun... They were described as lower class, ignorant, scary, and dangerous. Although there were far more enslaved Chinese, but we're not concerned with Moab. Now, a, a, the Lord, Yahweh Shah, spoke about that. You know, how the leaders of the Gentiles do exercise dominion over their own people. You know? Well, you know what? That's between them. But we're concerned about what you did to us. If they want to enslave their own damn people, well, it is what it is. We talking about what you did to us, though. Now it says some wealthy Chinese Moab preferred to prefer the exotic Kunlun slaves. So yeah, although you know they were enslaving their own people, Moab enslaving Moab, they really prefer Israelite slaves. They prefer to have our people in slavery, and by nature we're not slaves. We're the best people on the planet, but we were put in slavery, 
And they got to pay for that too. That's why all nations go into captivity for what they did to Israel. Now it says Israelite slavery in China peaked during the Tang and Song dynasties, which is from, which is from uh, 960 AD to 1279 AD. All right. The Tang and Song dynasties, but the number of Israelite slaves taken to China during this 600 an eight year period is unclear so they, they didn't even keep track with the numbers and that's why you can't be carnal concerning our people because a lot of our people even look like Moab today even look like Ammon tight slanted eyes and, and to be honest I got cousins down here in Mississippi you can mistake them for Moab because of how their eyes look you know because because Jake, you know, we, we come in all varieties, man. But you got to keep in mind, we've been scattered among the heathen. You know? And many scriptures support that fact. Support that history. Because the Bible is history. It's world history. Now it says, by this point, Chinese perceptions, Moab perception of the Kunlun became more complex. These perceptions range from strong and mysterious to frightening. The Kunlun and the Tang Dynasty era were portrayed in numerous stories of the period as heroic, resourceful, and ironically, culturally Chinese. So they became like Moab. They became like Moab, speaking the language, you know, eating the food, but, you know, by bloodline and by their spirit they're a whole different nation they're Israelites but, but they've learned the ways of Moab but it doesn't make them Moab you know they just learned their ways we were mingled among the heathen and learned their works that's in the Psalms okay the, the Kunlun and the Tang Dynasty era were portrayed in numerous stories of the period as heroic so Moab looked up to us you know as heroic resourceful they had a great need for us, you know, because Israel are responsible, you know, for doing everything on the planet by the grace, mercy, and power of Yahweh Bashem Shai. And ironically, culturally Chinese. And this is where you get the topic of Israelite foreigners. Very simple. Very simple concept. If the Holy Spirit works on your mind to receive it. Most Chinese during this period, however, unless they were very wealthy, had little contact with Israelite slaves. Perhaps explaining the different views, the, the differing views of the Kunlun. Nonetheless, a lot of them still had slaves. And you're not going to find every single thing in detail on these websites and these articles. But we, we find what we can, you know. And that's really the point, you know what I'm saying? That's really the point. And he keeps mentioning more of the history of Israelite slaves in uh, China. You know, Song Empire, you know. Wan Dynasty, let me read that. The Wan Dynasty from 1271 A.D., to 1368 AD witnessed, witnessed expanded contact with Israelites through trade and diplomatic missions sent to Madagascar now as far as when you meditate on slavery itself and especially you know when the slave trade mainly took off concerning our people that came here to the Americas it wasn't Hamites going to slavery, it was Israelites going to slavery. Just like it was Israelites going to slavery during the Arab slave trade. That was Israelites, bro. You know? There's a lot of history people don't know about. You know? Even dealing with the Moors, the, 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 topic, the topic of the Moors. You know, throughout Europe, Spain, Portugal, a lot of them going to slavery. Before, Israelites in Africa going to slavery. You know, there's a lot of history, man. A lot of history, bro. Okay. Now I mentioned Morocco. 
Morocco goes back to the word more. The, the Moroccans, well, Morocco goes back to more. Mauritania, Africa goes back to more. You know, and a lot of the so-called Moors, which are Israelites, they went to slavery too. You know, they just believed in a different God, you know. They believed in the Islamic God, you know, Allah. Which that, that, that religion, that, that false belief system was enforced on them, you know. But let's read this again. The Wan Dynasty, 1271 AD to 1368 AD, witnessed expanded contact with Israelites, through trade and diplomatic missions sent to Madagascar. Moroccans also arrived in China <coughs> during the Wan Dynasty. You have a lot of Israelites in Morocco visiting Quanzhou in South China as well as Hangzhou in the port city of Guangzhou. Salaki, I don't have the best, you know, um, pronunciations of these more more bite places you know but that's the point bro now, now they're mentioning other parts of africa you know but you got to keep in mind that um israelites were there too you know what i'm saying a lot of hidden history There's something else I wanted to get for you. I could find it. Before I read that. And that's good too. There's something else I wanted to get. And maybe I passed it. Let me scroll back up. <clears throat> I was just looking at it, bro. Because I was looking at it before I started up. But it mentions the uh, the different parts of uh China where there were um Salakia. it makes the different parts of uh africa where israelites are located at you know and, and you can um fast forward this to today's time so beyond the slave trade it says this right here nigerians constitute the largest well we're gonna say israelite israelite groups in guangzhou followed by traders from Senegal, Mali, um, uh, uh, Guinea, and Ghana. Israelites are all over in in, uh, in those places, man. You got Israelites in Senegal, Israelites in Mali, Israelites in uh, Guinea, Israelites in Ghana, you know? Yeah, man. And when you scroll up to get another point, It says U.S. and Chinese soldiers plant flags upon completion of the Lado Road, 1945. You know, pretty much when you go back to World War II, World War I, you got to keep in mind that uh, the Israelites, so-called black Americans, were, were, were brought over there. You know, they, 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 were, um, they were in certain parts of uh, China and even in certain parts of Japan, you know. Now they they mentioned the uh the buffalo soldiers, you know. If I can get some of that history. And I'm going to run through this, bro, cuz I'm about to get up out of here in a minute. And that would say it's over the next 4 centuries the rise of Europe and in particular European trade and colonial expansion marginalized Chinese/East African contact. Both the Chinese and the Africans, really Moab and um speaking about Israelites in this context, not the people of Ham, okay? Now look to Europe and the West rather than each other as trading partners. <clears throat> yeah, because, you know, Edom was doing his thing, you know? As is written, you know, um, the Roman Empire had to be revived. You know, his deadly wound was healed, you know? So, the, you know, the, the beast will come back on the scene. Trading connections between China and East Africa were not lost, but neither 
were, were they considered particularly important in this new era of global commerce? Now, um, they're mentioning trade. I want to get something else. Let's get this right here. The first significant, now let's say it's African American. We're going to say Israelite contact with modern China came during the Boxer Rebellion. Troops from the 10th Cavalry, one of the four famed Buffalo soldier units, were part of the international military force of 20,000 soldiers sent to suppress the uprising. The uprising led by the Society of the Righteous and Harmonious Fist Boxers and to free foreign hostages and Chinese Christians held by them. The point is that, you know, Israelites were sent to China, you know, a unit of Buffalo soldiers. Between World War I and World War II, Israelite jazz musicians such as the, the Earl Welly Band of Seattle, Washington, rose to prominence in Shanghai and other Chinese coastal cities. Some of these musicians eventually ended up incarcerated by the Japanese when they invaded China in 1937. Right, so either way you, you uh, slice it, there were Israelites, you know, put in Japan, you know, you were incarcerated by the, you know, by the Japanese in this case. But you still got Israelites in Japan, bro. Like I said, I'm going to find more history on that. But, you know, our people were all over the world. You know? Let's jump down to this right here. It says, despite the tensions among university students, Israelites and increasingly... We'll, 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 we'll say um, American Israelites <laughs> Israelites from America because we're not African Americans all right have been a growing presence in the country in the country of uh, China since 1990 by 2014 an estimated 500,000 we're going to say Israelites and Afro-Caribbeans which are Israelites so-called African-Americans, Israelites, were present in China. And that's it, man. You know, that, that's the point right there. So, yeah, man. Our people, we're all over the world. In the Far East, okay? In China. And Lord willing, this is edifying. I pray this is edifying, bro. You know, and I'm going to see if I can get this video to play for you because I want to speak about this one so called Moabite philosopher, and I believe he's an Israelite. I believe this man has to be a Jake. You know, now listen to a little podcast on uh, Spreaker, or you could say Spreaker.com. Now it's hard for me to pronounce the man's name, but it says African immortal of Taoism. We know we're not Africans, we're Israelites. But I, I believe this man is Israelite too. You see the name right there, it starts with a T. It's just hard for me to pronounce that name. But I'm gonna play this for you. You know, um, Lord willing, you can hear it. Tiagwai, one of the nine immortals of Taoism. Tiagwai was an accomplished martial artist known as the Iron Staff Immortal. He lived during China's Golden Age. So his name is Chegwai. That's how you say it. Chegwai. I'm going to see if I can find a uh, an image of it because he really looks like a black dude here. And we can find some images. Cause you're not gonna be able to see it on the podcast, but these are some images of a uh, Chegwai, the immortal. Let's zoom in on him. Look at his nose. Look at his hair. He looks like an Israelite, bro. You know, you, you look at his features. You know, very dominant features. You know what I'm saying? 
a lot of those older, you know, um, so-called Moabite philosophers, you're going to come to find out, a lot of them are Israelites, man. Surprisingly. There's another image of Chegg White. Man, look at him. <laughs> look at his hair. Look at his nose. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people don't like this information, bro. You have a lot of people upset about this information. Look at this image right here. Look at that, bro. Come on now. Look at him. Chegg White, the immortal. A philosopher, a uh, martial artist, okay? And there's other images, you know? There's more images. He's not a damn Moabite, he's an Israelite. And everyone isn't happy about this information. Now this is on uh, SammyBoy.com Okay And um You know you have a little information you, you have websites like this Where you have people just you know Put these different comments You know pretty much on these different forums You know OMG Which means oh my god Now says Lao Chi. Now we read uh Chegwai, you know. It says uh is an African, really Israelite, you know. And this is put up by Ron Ron. So it, it, it surprised them, you know. This this man Chegwai is a Jake. I do remember reading that a number of Israelites settled in Japan and China. And um, it says uh, in that Lao Chi, we're gonna say was Israelite, and the first shogun of Japan was an Israelite. Hold on, let me get out of there for a minute. But yeah, let's go back to it. Okay, because uh, they were supposed to have some, you know, some information on Chegwai. We're going to read this right here, okay? And all this is good. I mean, really, you can just run through all this, you know, but you can read this for yourself. You know what I'm saying? I really just want to get the meat of this all. Okay. Now it says, as for the Israelite presence in early China, there is evidence of substantial populations of an Israelite substratum in the earliest periods of Chinese history and reports of major kingdoms ruled by Israelites are frequent in Chinese documents. The Shang uh, dynasties or, or, or dynasty of ancient China are described. So, you know, Shang dynasties, you know, so they have it uh, spelled incorrectly. The Shang dynasties of ancient China are described as having black and oily skin. And I'm going to balance it out too. Keep in mind that the Moab and these other nations in the East, they're considered dark nations as well. You know, before Esau Edom went around colonizing the earth, you know, uh, uh, even the other nations had darker skin. But you have to keep in mind that Israel was still scattered among them though. Now it says the Chinese sage Lao Chi, 600 BC, was black in complexion. He was described as marvelous and beautiful as Jasper. And you keep reading, it speaks about you know magnificent temples. You know, they would erect sculptures, you know, uh, like him. You know, worship him like a god. But the point is that, you know, 
Israel was scattered among the heathen who was scattered among Moab. Okay. Now they shouldn't have been making idols of Jacob or anything like that. You know. But at the same time, many other nations they do worship Jake. They they do worship Israel, you know. You know what I'm saying? But we don't condone idolatry, you know what I'm saying? Making of statues and worshiping it. But the point is there, you know, Lord Willing is edifying. You have Israelites in the Orient, bro. And there's tons of history on it. I mean, you could read the rest of this for yourself. I may come back to this and, you know, read it in another lesson, you know, dealing with uh with Israelites among Ammon, the so called Japanese, you know. Cause they mentioned some info dealing with Israel among Ammon. Okay? Like I was mentioning before, I speculate there's this has there has to be there has to be a lot of Israelites among the people of Ammon. Because a lot of the people within Japan, a lot of them associate their uh their personality with with Jake in America. Uh, of the tribes, you know? So we have to be among them. So with that, I pray this is edifying. I want to say Brock the Yahawa, Brock the Yahushai, 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 by Shimra Kapudash, double honor to all the apostles and all the bishops, great millstone, still well. Peace, blessed the house of David the elect. Shalom.